So I'm a big fan in obedience uh, uh, for using food. Uh, I think there, there are, are some huge benefits. One of the most, you know, tangible benefits is like, it's the only drive that we can kind of manufacture, right? And, and manipulate in a dog, right? A dog that they don't need to play ball. They don't need to play tug, but they all need to eat, right? They need food to survive. Um, and, and typically when people, well, traditionally wouldn't use food for training, right? Because the thought was maybe the dog would be dependent upon the food or the food is kind of like bribing your dog to, to train with you. Um, then they move to, okay, we're going to use food, but to motivate the dog to use food, we're going to essentially starve the dog and if not let the dog have access to food for a couple of days and then try and feed them. Um, so obviously to me, those are on like two ends of the spectrum, right? Like no food at all or well, kind of no food for a few days and, and then you get to eat. Um, what we, we, where we ended up getting to is one of the, are you guys familiar with existential feeding? Yes. Yeah. So for those that aren't familiar with it, um, existential feeding means that every calorie that that dog gets comes via you and your dog doing something for those calories, mm -hmm. right? Um, so it, it's, it's based kind of like hand feeding. I don't like to call it hand feeding because not all of the time does the food have to come from my hand. Mm -hmm. um, and hand feeding doesn't necessarily imply that that's the only feeding that they get, right? But existential feeding means every calorie from the moment they wake up to the moment they get to sleep is from doing something for you. And to me, the quickest way to a dog's heart is through their stomach, right? We, we can manipulate that. Um, and we get, when, when we're doing the bite work stuff right now, we talk, we're, like, we've talked quite a bit about like creating proactive dogs and reactive decoys. Uh, and that same theory kind of applies when we're doing obedience too, right? We want the dogs to be the one to engage you. You not trying to, how, how many times have we gotten out and said, okay, I need to get my dog's attention, right? And we start showing them the food that we have or the toy that we have and saying, hey, look how fun this thing is. Like, look, look, look how it works, right? And we're going to play and have a great time. Uh, but just like in, in decoy work and in bite work, for me, that's fruit from the poison tree, <laughs> Right? We're telling the dog, like, hey, I'm going to try my best to entertain you, and you're going to decide when those times are that you're going to, that's going to be enough entertainment. Mm -hmm. Is that making sense? Mm -hmm. So in obedience, we want our dogs to have the same attitude that they have in bite work, right? To come out and say, hey, what are we doing? I know that I do stuff, and great things happen, but it's coming from you, so please give me some direction, right? And we want to have that attitude. I talked a little bit about it yesterday of being like, huh, like we're, we're too good for them. Right? Opposition, reflex in theory, not necessarily physical, but sometimes physical as well, right? Keeping them away from us. And they're begging us and them trying to get our attention to, to engage with us. And, and we decide to, every now and then, to give them the opportunity to do that. Are you guys following me so far? Mm -hmm. So when we have them first understanding, they have to understand what this existential feeding thing is. Otherwise, it's not that we're not going to get that the level of engagement that we're looking for. But when they understand that, hey, my food bowls don't exist to me anymore, food comes from you, then it, it's much our, our negative punishment in obedience means a lot more, right? We can get them out. Like, how many of our dogs get super excited when it's dinner time? Right? They see the routine of you getting their food bowl or, or whatever's happening, that level of excitement and engagement. It's like, wow, why can't you be like this? when I need you to be like this, right? But we can, if in your dog's mind, every moment with you is potentially dinner time, right? If they do the right thing, it's potentially dinner time. Um, and when they make the wrong choice or we take them out and they don't want to engage with us and then we put them away, imagine if you're going to feed your dog dinner and you get your bowl and you do your full routine that they're used to and they're getting all excited and they're doing and then you say, mm, I'm going to crave. Mm. And you put that dinner away. How kind of ticked off your dog is going to be, right? Like pretty driven. So that that's the the what we want them to feel and experience when we negatively punish them in obedience or, or whatever we're kind of doing with them. They, they need that drive. Any questions so far? No? Anyone in here do like falconry stuff? 
So you guys, so Fal we, I talked a little bit yesterday about Tillicum, the, the whale that, you guys know how they kind of train those things? Yeah. No? So food, so any animal that we as humans can't put a collar on and bang into positions, um, we have to be more creative, right? We can't force a whale to jump and do a flip. Right? It has to be the whale's idea to jump and do the flip. Um, so we'll use whales because we talked about them yesterday. So generally whales, dolphins, what they do is they go and if you've seen blackfish, they'll go kidnap these whales from the wild um, and bring them and drop them into a, a, an aquarium, a big tank. Pop quiz, what's that big empty tank? It's a, it's a skinner box, right? There's nothing in that tank for, for the whales or, or the dolphins to, to deal with. It's just an empty tank. So uh, what happens is, is the, the trainer comes out and they have whistles. You guys seen them use those like dog whistles, essentially. <clears throat> they blow their whistle and they dump a bucket of mackerel into, into the aquarium, into the skinner box. The whales eat the mackerel, they go away. Next day they come out, blow the whistle, dump the bucket of mackerel in. So they're slowly in that process. What are they working on? So they're charging the marker, they're classically conditioning that whistle, right? Whistle happens, stimulus or unconditioned stimulus uh, arrives, food arrives. So let's say they do about two weeks of that. Then they come out, uh, the context is set, the whale says, okay, this guy walks in here, whistle blows, food comes. They come out, blow the whistle, and they drop one mackerel in the water. The whale eats the mackerel and says, that's not the contract. Mm -hmm. That's not what I signed up for, right? So what did we see some of the dogs do when they went outside on negative punishment? Spinning. Spinning, we've seen them Barking. nipping at people. <laughs> we've seen them doing, showing spontaneous aggression, mm -hmm. right? So what happens when that whale gets frustrated because he got the short end of the stick and didn't get the, the right bargain, um, the whale might slap its tail in the water. When the whale slaps its tail in the water, burp, bucket of food goes in. Right? So now we start to have learning associations happening, right? So the trainer comes out, stands there, the whale doesn't do anything, then it finally slaps its tail in the water, burp, bucket of fish goes in. Right? And that's how we start building more complex behaviors. Um, so it shows a whale, there's no, we can't force these whales to do anything, right? They have to, it has to be their idea. Yes, it needs to be a super sterile environment. Um, you can't train that whale in the middle of the ocean. You have to train it in that little tank with no other whales and no other fun things happening, right? This is your choice, this I am your world, right? And so our lives with our dogs need to be our Skinner boxes. We need to be those whale trainers and say, all of your food is coming from me, all of your, existential food is coming from me. Now this, I'm not at all telling anyone, so this isn't construed, to starve your dog. Right, what I'm saying is, you give them plenty of opportunities to eat that macro. You say, okay, hey, Fluffy, I want you to come out here, and I don't even ask them to do anything. Just come out here, and maybe you look at me, and I'm gonna click and give you the opportunity for food. Now if you go to that food and say, no, I don't do food. Well, in bite work, there were no Suicide bunnies, right? Mm. So why would we have suicide bunnies here? We said, okay, bunny got away. I don't offer you food now for another hour or so. Would you put it away or? Put the dog away, yeah. remove that, just kind of reset the whole scenario. Mm -hmm. Then I'm gonna, try, in an hour, we'll try again. Yeah. And if you ignore the food, I'm giving you the opportunity to eat. Yeah, it's the dog hungry. making the choice to say, I don't want it. Right. Yeah. right? So it also helps with having a, I find having a clear conscience from on our end, right? Like when I first got into it, we would like start, we would withhold food from dogs and then they would, and I was like, mm, something just not adding up here, right? Like it's not feeling right. So we want to give them plenty of opportunities and let them choose whether they want to or not. And I don't ever beg them to eat. I say, here's food, this is your opportunity. If you don't want it, see you later. Um, usually younger dogs pick up on it faster, older dogs that may, not understand the system, you may have to, it may take a couple of days, right, for them to I get know, on. And rescue, you can take a long time, call it nothing in life is free, yeah. to get dogs to, like, independent or, like, semi-feral dogs and stuff like that to even look at people. Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. Right. You, that's. I, I was saying to him, like my personal dog doesn't give a shit about me. <laughs> like you know, she <laughs> does not. She if I drop dead in front of her, she would her tail would be wagging and she'd be happy. She, she, would, would, she would do a deck check. Right. Yeah. Like, <laughs> 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 daily meals in my pocket, and if they didn't do anything for it, well, they didn't yeah. leave me enough to look at me tomorrow. Yeah. And, and sometimes, like what will happen as we get into the system, right? Is if if we get lazy on it and we feed them out of a bowl one day because we just don't have time, like we're teaching them sometimes you can out you can yeah yeah, like if you kind of wait it out you're gonna win you can be more stubborn than i can be right um so we have to be aware of that we also have to be aware of that it it seems at first to be like man it's gonna take a lot of time i'm gonna feed every calorie to my dog (laughs) by an end but we don't have to give them one piece of food at a time right if we have a a, a busy day they do a behavior that i like click and we give you a handful like we can go through two cups of food in five minutes. What's your recommendation for people who feed raw? So another thing that we talked about. So I there's, that is probably the primary reason that I don't feed raw. Um, but I did it with mittens. Yeah, we have, we have a lot of our training. Mittens or with mittens? Well, <laughs> <laughs> she did mittens with mittens. Mittens just like Yeah, so a, a lot Until of until it hurt my hands, I did it. A lot of our trainers. With their personal dogs, do it with raw. Yeah. They're just, I just call them savages and dirty little hamsters. Yeah. <laughs> like a lot of them do it with raw. Um, it's massive. You, you can't just, if we're not doing it existentially, we're always asking them to work for dessert. Mm-hmm. And saying, mm-hmm. like, hey, do you, is dessert worth it? Some days dessert's worth it. Like, mm-hmm. it's like, but other days, it's like, oh, it's not that, it's not that important. I'm already, just like everything else, my drives are satiated. Mm-hmm. My, my stomach is satiated. Right? Um, 